Ezekiel, God is good. <laughs> Let's look at Ezekiel 47. Let's look at Ezekiel chapter 47 and we'll see. Live in a comfort zone. I'm going to fly through today's message. But I think, that, I think even if we don't do anything as well we've done now, has driven him a very important point. Ezekiel 47 verses 3 to 5, I'll read from the Amplified Bible. And when the man went on eastward with a measuring line in his hand, he measured a thousand cubits. A thousand cubits, by the way, is 1,500 feet. And he caused me to pass through the waters, waters that were ankle deep. Pay attention to where the waters are. Again, he measured another thousand cubits and caused me to pass through the waters, this time reaching to the knees. Again, he measured a thousand cubits and caused me to pass through the waters. Waters are reached to my loins or your waist in some versions. Afterward, he measured a thousand and it was a river that I could not pass through, but the waters had reason, waters to swim in, a river that could not be passed over or through. So technically, this man took Ezekiel 6,000 feet out. There is no stream that is that far out. So it tells you this is just a symbolic description of the work of the Holy Spirit in the life. And the measuring man, the man with the measuring line is God himself. He measured where Ezekiel was at each point in time. Like God knows where you are, God knows where I am. But he said it wasn't enough to stay where the waters were at the ankle, the knee, or the waist. Because guess what? For as long as the waters are at those points, if you go into the beach, you still have some semblance of control. You could decide to walk in, you could decide to walk, you can do what you want to do. But up to the point where the waters overwhelmed and overtook the man, then the man with the measuring line stopped. And God is saying to us today that he wants us He's calling us out of our comfort zones. What does a comfort zone mean? A comfort zone is a place in your life that's within your control, a place in your life that's familiar, a place in your life where the need of God may not be evident. I see that in the nations that we're in. We're very comfortable. Things work. So do you know what? It's so easy not to look to God for anything. You go to work every time, your paycheck comes. If you've ever worked in an organization where there's no guarantee that you get paid, nobody will tell you to pray. Nobody will tell you to fast. You just know that only God can see me through the situation. But because we live in an environment that things work, I remember when we came to Canada, I really had to be careful. And my husband said to me, he said, so but there is a spirit of complacency on the land. We must be careful it doesn't take over us. We had to believe God for electricity for months. We had to believe God for drinkable, portable water coming out of the tap. That was back home. Your faith was up there just because you needed to survive. When you left home in the morning, you believed God that you wouldn't come in contact with armed bandits. No matter how wealthy you are, no matter how high the walls were, if they chose to come after you, they would come and they would break your wall with acid and come in and shoot and rape women. But you come to a place where everything works. All of a sudden, it's too difficult to wake up at one in the morning to pray. All of a sudden, it's too difficult to fast at all. All of a sudden, you know that if I work for two years in this role, I will be promoted to that. It's given, not necessarily in some environments. That is a comfort zone that we find ourselves. So it is the need for God is not evident in the comfort zone. God usually is the last option. How many of us, even deciding what job to take, or where to go, where to shop, where to do your grocery shopping, what school to go to, consider to ask God first. The society actually determines these things for you. The school system will define what area, what catchment area you live in, and what school your children are going to. Is that really what God is saying? So we just give in so easily, and we stay in our comfort zone. But when you read scripture, God has never encouraged people to stay in their comfort zone. He's constantly calling us out of our comfort zones. 
And so if you're in a place right now where it's stormy, where there's so much uncertainty, I say congratulations to you. I say a big congratulations to you. Because you know what? That is the way God is going to show his power in your life. I said to some people last week when we were praying for the Christian school, AKCS, I said, if we do not have trials, we cannot have testimonies. And it doesn't have to make sense. It doesn't have to seem to be working to know that God's hand is upon this. I said, when he does it, there will be no question who did it. And so if we have to go through a period of uncertainty, I'm ready to go till God says otherwise. And that's where God is calling us all to. Outside your comfort zone brings initial confusion, uncertainty, discomfort, even fear and anxiety. I don't know about you, but I don't like being in a place that I cannot predict. I don't like being in a place where I'm, where I'm not comfortable either physically or emotionally. The natural tendency for a human being is to move away from that source or cause of discomfort. Outside the comfort zone, only God can help you. And I said there's an initial confusion because till you recognize that it's only God that can help you and you run to him for help, you will be confused. But there's nothing as good as understanding the fact that if God called me to something, he will make provision and he will equip. And guess what? Then it's his responsibility. It is his responsibility. When we moved into the sanctuary, the Lord gave us instructions in March. Go and find a place. And it was seemingly impossible. We didn't know that he had seen ahead that what we were using before, there was going to be a change in management and they wouldn't want the church there anymore in a couple of months. But we just obeyed. It was outside our comfort zone because in our minds we were not ready for it. We were barely 30. And so everything that made sense, we were not there. But he said, go. And I look back and I marvel at God at every step of the way. Everywhere we went to, he had made provision waiting for us. But if we didn't take the steps towards those things, we would not have found him. And it was a very uncomfortable place to be. I remember many times we asked pastor questions. He said, I don't know. I can't answer. All I know is that this is what God said we should do. And we will do it. And right up to the week we were to take possession of this place, just the building, the day before the timeline, we were short of $45,000. The day before, the Lord brought that money in. 15000 came in from Nigeria from one source. 30000 came in from another source in Canada. At that point, the bank said, what more do you need? How much more money do you need? This is the bank that refused to support us. But they recognized something is happening here. We were not in our comfort zone at all. We were not. And I remember Pastor saying, because we bought a house a year before, that if he had known that God wanted us to build, we wouldn't have bought a house. And he would have used the money of our down payment towards the church. I said, that's exactly why God didn't tell you then. Because then, you had a, an alternative B, as Carrie said to us this morning. We had worked it out how we would have done it. He wanted to take all the glory. And right up to the day before we moved in here, we were in April the following year, the, the, the company where we were didn't agree to renew our lease. We still hadn't finished the building here. And we moved out by faith. I remember Borelli and a couple of us moving the things out of the Legion by faith and saying, we're going to have service next week in this place. We didn't have occupants in nothing. Again, the Lord made a way, favor. The city approved us meeting here on the Sunday, even though we were not ready. And they said, we're going to, we trust that in three weeks, 
all that you need to have in place, you will put in place. And they gave us occupancy on Friday. We didn't have a place of worship for the Sunday up to that Friday morning. But we had the faith that he would bring us through. It was very uncomfortable. But you know what? We saw God move in ways. We prayed like we had not prayed before. It was only God that could do it. So for one year, we were operating outside our comfort zone. You will not always have the answer. But one thing you know is that you can depend on God. But I want to say something now. It's a choice. You have a choice as to whether to depend, whether to yield to him or not to yield to him. God always calls us there. And in the place outside of our comfort zone, we are built up. We are built up. I share the challenge of AKCS with us this morning, and I marvel at the children, the faith of the children. <laughs> when they talk, they say, our building is going to be ready. Our school is not going to be closed down. But every evidence up to last week was not saying so. But I've seen children stand in faith. Every Monday they go there, they stretch their hands praying and calling on God. Children. And they refused to accept anything else but that. And when God brought it through, I just said, Lord, if not for anything else, for the sake of these children who are standing in faith, because we told them he can do all things, they took it. And they have stood in that. God is saying to you and I today, I want to build you up. So I'm actually going to move you out of where you're used to being. And I'm going to take you to the place where the waters overwhelm you. And where you can't walk. You can't wade. You can't even float. Because the waters are boisterous. I'm the only one that would hold you. Because Jesus is the anchor of your soul. And when you hold on to him, there's no wave that will thrash around you that will destroy you. You will know it's boisterous. You will realize that you're being shaken, but you will not drown. He's encouraging us today. Examples of people in the Bible, and I want you to note the scriptures and your personal quiet and read on these lives. You will be challenged. Abraham, in Abraham, in Genesis 12, verses 1 and 2, the Bible tells us about Abraham, strange man, it says, now the Lord has said to Abraham, get out of your country from your family, from your father's house, to a land that I will show you. I will make you a great nation. I will bless you and make your name great, and you shall be a blessing. He called Abraham out of everything he knew. And then he wasn't even taken into a place that was defined. Just keep going. That's the ultimate outside of being your comfort zone. And then you look at David. David was called out of the sheepfold. He was very comfortable there. And he was told to go to stay in Saul's palace. He wasn't used to that. And God didn't even stop there. After going into Saul's palace, okay, you've anointed me as king. He didn't even get into his kingship for 23 years. And then he began to move him from one cave to another. You would have asked yourself, God, I didn't ask for this. But that is God for you. It is a progressive experience in your life. The truth of the matter is that after you come through one experience, he actually takes you out again into another place. So don't imagine that where you are is the end of it. Till Jesus comes, you're going to be constantly being drawn out of your comfort zone. Because that is actually where God wants you and I to be. Jonah. <laughs> Jonah was like, no. No says, go to Nineveh. Where did Jonah go? He got on a ship, going to Tashish. Opposite direction. Like many of us are. God is saying, go here. You're like, no, I'm going the other way. But in his mercy, the Lord God Jonah swallowed up by will. I say his mercy because God forced Jonah to go back to where he was. Some of us, God is just looking at us. And you are going in the opposite direction. I need you to pray, to ask God, bring me back forcefully to where I need to be. Because if you're not where you're supposed to be, there's no grace there. There's no peace there. 
and ultimately your relationship with God is truncated. And that's a prayer I'm learning to pray now. Father, constrain me. Because you see, he's giving you a will. So many times God would allow you to come to him on, on your own terms. But you know what? Sometimes he has to break us to get there. And he's saying to you and I, don't let me break you. Come willingly. But I may need to break you. But even in the breaking, he heals you. He carries you like a good shepherd. Paul, in Acts chapter 9, verses 3 and 6, the call of Paul, of Saul, and then he became Paul. He was totally out of his comfort zone. Saul had been persecuting the people, and, and, and now he was being called to embrace the faith of the people he was persecuting and killing. And then I want to read something to us in the book of Acts. I want us to see that because this morning when Washington Kari talked about God's promises not always being a comfortable thing. I want you to see a promise of God to Saul or to Paul that will blow your mind. In Acts chapter 9 and verse 16, God said about Paul, For I will make clear to him how much he will be afflicted and must endure and suffer for my name's sake. That was a promise. That was a promise from God to Paul. Is that a promise that you will readily receive? If somebody said to you, this is a promise of God for your life, will you naturally say amen? I, can, I doubt it. But God made that promise. He said, I will make clear to him how, I will, how he must suffer, how I will afflict him. I want to encourage you, go and read the Bible well. There are many things that we are teaching that are wrong. Christianity is not a bed of roses. But it's a place that has an end in glory. That was a promise that God made to Paul. And when you read in Acts chapter 20 and 21 to 23, when Paul began to move towards that place of suffering, people told him, you can't go to Jerusalem. You can't go there. He remembered. And Paul said, I'm ready. I am ready. Because he remembered what God has said. And so for him to move towards that promise, in the way he did, like Christ went to the cross, also, Paul had been praying for God to give him the grace to enter into that promise. God is calling us a place of maturity where it will not be the really little things that we're asking him for. These are deep, deep things he's calling us to. Don't look at the challenges in your life and think that God has forsaken you. Or think that, oh, my life is at, at an end. See them as opportunities for God to be glorified in your life. As opportunities for growth in your walk with him. Jesus himself, the Bible tale tells us in Philippians 2, he says, let this mind be in you which also was in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, did not consider robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, taking the form of a bond servant and coming in the likeness of man. And being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even the death of the cross. We see that in Jesus the disciples, Jesus left his last word in the book of Matthew 28 to them in 19 and 20. He said, go into the world and preach the gospel, making disciples of men. That was a commandment. Leave Jerusalem and go to the uttermost parts of the earth. Like God is saying to us this morning, go out and share with somebody the love of God. These things we're doing is to give us the courage so that in our own daily life we can do it. That's why we do it as a church. It's not a ritual. It's a building up. Jesus said, I have given you the power. You go in my name. Go believing that everybody you talk to, whoever you give that to, is God working through you to touch a life. You have no idea whose life you may be saving when you do that. He said, leave your comfort zone. Don't be satisfied with you making heaven alone. Desire the same of people around you. 
And if you know you have a good news, share it. You will be ashamed because you're thinking, what will people say? But his grace is there. What are the lessons we have to learn quickly from this? All these men that we talked about, the change was God-initiated. <laughs> I don't know how many of us will on our own voluntarily go into some of these things. God knows that if he's saying who's going to volunteer to be crucified upside down, all our hands will be stuck under our bums. We'll be sitting. No hand is moving. And then we'll be saying, the Lord has not spoken. So God has to pull us out physically and take us out of our comfort zone. God initiated. The response led to a deeper work with God and it caused them to depend on the Holy Spirit. One thing I want to say to encourage us, though they were challenged, every one of them was blessed in the end. We see Abraham, God said, I will make you your name great and you shall be a blessing. We all want that. The Bible says about Jesus in Philippians, he said, therefore God has highly exalted him and given him the name which is above every other name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow, of those in heaven and of those on earth and those under the earth, and that every tongue should confess, confess that Jesus Christ is the Lord, is Lord to the glory of God the Father. For every one of them that responded to coming out of their comfort zone, there was a blessing that came with it. There is no glory without pain. No. If Jesus had to go through the pain to receive such an accolade that today generations are benefiting from, I want you to desire to also be that person that in obeying God, many will be blessed because of your life. We read the books and the epistles as Paul wrote because he obeyed to come out of his comfort zone. You and I are benefiting from these things today. Why don't you decide that you want to be that life that God can count on and God can work through to bring glory to his name? So in closing, the key to succeeding in the new place or position of discomfort is waiting on the Holy Spirit. Like I said, we cannot do it in ourselves. We need him. And in Acts chapter 1, Jesus said to them, wait for the promise of the Father. And in verse 8, he said, you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the end of the earth. Today, God is saying, only those who desire to be witnesses for me will I endure with power. The truth of the matter is that God has made us see in scripture he's not wasteful with his resources. Every time you see God work, he's not wasteful. And so he will not waste his anointing either. We say we want the Holy Spirit, we want the power of God. Well, are you ready to be a witness for him? Why should he give those things to you? Why should he endure you? You can make a difference where you are. And God is calling you out of your comfort zone this morning. But he's not just calling you out to be by yourself. He's calling you out and he will be with you. And he will strengthen you. And he will enable you. And he will bless you. And so, as we go out this morning, I want you to really ask yourself, I want you to think and look to God. I'm not saying, we're not here to force people to do anything, but I'm here to challenge you. I'm here to challenge you to a higher place of relationship, a higher place of usefulness, a higher place of impact and influence in the kingdom. God is saying, come out of your comfort zone. I don't do evangelism. Yeah, I know, but he's calling you there. Trust him.
enemy they shut the door in your face that's okay Jesus was mocked he was spat on and we've been followers of Christ he said in Matthew we should go and as you do this today God will give you the courage even in your daily walk and meeting people we're doing an exercise and building ourselves up so I want you to take a moment and just looking and reading that card in your hand I want you to pray for the home and the person that you're going to give that to we're not doing this out of religion we're truly desirous